uh, you know, where did Jung come from? Um, this is this is very nice because you, you're coming, you know, in some ways from this, um, you know, Asian perspective of life. You have that heritage, you know. Yes. And yes. we're trying to we're, we're considering the possibility of building bridges here, you know, between cultures to get benefits. Um, but at the same time, too, I think you probably were were, were raised up in, in in the industrialized society, right? Yes. Your education, true. everything, and so that's coming was generated out of England and you know and places like that, you know. So we have it. So Jung's perspective is not like it's just basically in some ways our perspective. So what's coming to me is that if um, many people like yourselves to find your own heritage, Jung then becomes a tool. You know, by by which you know, industrialized uh, Asians can can find their own heritage, which was what Prabhupada was also trying to do too. Yeah. By finding your own heritage, you are talking about uh, the archetypes, or I mean, how how would Young help us to find? I talk psychologically speaking, or because historically speaking, or how? That's a remarkable way of looking at it. Uh, I yes. think one very very nice place to start with here. Uh, let me let me do, show this. You see, you see here we have a, a Philemon Foundation, uh, Shonu Shamdashini, okay. and uh, he's professor. He was he, he's at the University of London, you know, University College London, and uh, he was uh, in the in the history of medicine, with focusing on Jung, but now he's a professor in the School of European Languages, Culture, and Society. You know, which of course includes Carl Jung in the German. You know? And also now he's vice dean of arts and humanities in the faculty. So he's had his own very, very extensive development in his own like uh, career and trying to promote these things and help help culture like that. Uh, I think he's from Cindy, uh, Cindy background. They have again, cultural background, you know? Um, so uh, the reading list you see here too, you see the books I have on top there from with Carl Jung. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, I asked many times Jungian followers, you see Carl Jung sitting there, and I asked them, I say, if, if Carl Jung was Carl Jung was allow, alive tonight now, would he still be smoking a pipe? And all, invariably they all kind of stop and smile for a second and then shake their head, no, probably not. <laughs> he would have wouldn't be smoking anymore. You know? But that was a long time ago, the cultural ambience. So there's the, what are called the Tavistock Lectures, which are a series of lectures he gave at the Tavistock Foundation in London. And it's still there. It's a very powerful intellectual organization organizing these like, you know, conferences and things like that. Then there's the, the Kundalini uh, Yoga uh, book, which is a, a se se seminar that Jung did with another, another philosopher, which is again, very good because you can, you know, we can match up the Kundalini development. Then uh, the autobiography, uh, Memories, Dreams, and Reflections, which was done with one of his uh, lady uh, students. And then especially we have Carl Jung and the making of modern psychology, you know, the dream of a science. And that is like Rupa Go, uh, Jiva Goswami's Anuchedas. I mean, what do you call it? Um, uh, Sandarbhas. Oh, okay. That's, you know, Shoshonu Shandash, and he did that. And it took me like two or three months to read it, you know? And it's, it's written like that, I think, in Anuchedas. It's like little like, you know, one page, two, three page essays on different topics, which are put together in roughly a chronological order about Jung's life and how he developed and stuff like that and people he was encountering. And it's a very nice way to look at it. And then finally, the one I read the most recently was uh, Jung in India. Which was I was directed to that by um, Bernardo Nantes, who is the uh, the translator of Jung's Red Book into Spanish and has his own very powerful institute you know, like that. So the one Carl Jung and the making of modern psychology, the dream of a science is very much you know, and and again these are for people who have have a passion for these things like myself and who have a scholarly scholarly intention. And uh, now I see I can talk about these things at any, any level, you know, university level, um, professors, anybody. And Shonu um he, he did the, the Philemon Foundation, he translated the Red Book and so on. 
So he, he's a ni nice example of, uh, of someone coming out of this Indian, you know, uh, cultural heritage and, and trying to, uh, that's the thing, um, you know, to trying to co connect with his, um, what do you say, with his own, own heritage, you know, of, of, of thought, perspective, attitude. And you're asking them, what does it mean co co historically, culturally, everything else? And that's why I think we have to get into this point of who are we and, and how much we're baggage we're bringing with us and how deep it is and so on. So, so right away we get into this point of who am I and, and do I really inherit things from a certain family, you know? And, 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 and do I take them in my mother's womb? Do I take them with my mother's milk? Do I take them with my first day in school? You know, yeah. And, and how, how much do these forums allow me to understand things or not understand them? You know? Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So, so what you're saying is that in some ways, our subtle body, our subtle body is formed by the culture and the society in which we grow up. And that shapes both our, the way we look at the world and even the way we look at Krishna consciousness. So no, that's, that's part of what I was saying. Yeah. Okay. The other part is we come into this life, and the Jung's exact term is uh, uh, how's it go? Rasga, it's interesting, something, ta tabula rasga. Yeah, yeah I heard of tabula rasga. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ras rasgar means to scratch. <laughs> and tabula means we don't come into this world as a blank, blank slate. Yeah. We don't come into this world as a blank slate. Yeah. And so this is, um, let me show you this one more slide here. The two, th two things that are very central here. One is this one here. Okay. So th this, because these, these, these are slideshows we've been doing all over the world. Can you see it now? Yes, yes. Okay. So this was the book, Dialectical Spiritualism, a Vedic view of Western philosophy. And as I understand the history, Prophet asked for Shamasundar Das and... Uh, and the Hayagriva Das, Professor Howard, Howard Wheeler, I guess his name was, to, to do this, to ask him questions and telling, to describe to him Western philosophers, you know, and then he would give them his comments. So you see the list here that went from Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, St. Thomas Aquinas, Descartes, Leibniz, John Locke, Darwin, Henry Bergson, Sartre, Freud. And then um, Howard Wheeler, uh, I guess Hayagriva said, that ends our session with Jung. He's the last one. And Srila Prabhupada said, so far, he seems to be the most sensible. <laughs> oh. So, so very, uh, what very, you know, distinct analysis of, of, of Jung's perspective from, this, from the Bhakti Vedanta, you know, uh, purport. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. So that, I think, is, that's, in many ways, that's why I, I took some interest in it, because it's such a, declaration, you know, and so on. So I, in that, again, again yes. yeah. it's the same thing that we say, Prabhupada says, our Siddhanta, that you don't come into this world as uh, tabula rasga. You bring a lot of karma with you. And, and, and maybe you're taking birth in a certain nation because, mm. you know, that, that, that's what you're, you're destined to do. And that's how you understand things and so on. Yeah. Oh, okay.